Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. Good evening, I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Emily Flores. We thank you for joining us. Our top story this evening, snow in southern Utah impacting roads with changes expected up north. Those showers coming down especially hard in southern Utah. Take a look at this weather camera south of Cedar City. A snow squall warning ending at 1 p.m. ringing true. The camera filling up with snow and ice rapidly. You do not want to be caught on the roads in one of these. Wow, it shows just how fast it moves mm -hmm. in right there. So quick. Mm -hmm. Let's head over for a check of the weather with Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy. Happy Valentine's Day, Alana. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Mother Nature gifting us snow in portions of the state. That squall causes whiteout conditions and it happens fast. We're still dealing with snow in Iron County. Storm tracker radar pinpointing exactly what's going on. We're not done in the north. It's been quieter along the Wasatch Front, but we still have a few snow showers. And as you take a look, you're able to kind of see. Let's move up to northern Utah so you can get a really good idea on the western side of the lake as we zoom Zoom in. That's where we're seeing those showers popping up. On top of that, it's a little spotty, hit and miss for the Wasatch Front. Cache Valley seeing a few showers, picked up four inches in Smithfield this morning, and we see just pockets of snow showers for the Wasatch Front. Now, we know it's a different story down south, and as we head down there, you're able to see heavier snow. Grand Staircase up through Loa, over towards Panguitch, Beaver County, I-15, Cedar City, and yes, even St. George mixed in some snowflakes right now as we take a look at St. George. We've got a little green there, a little rain hole holding on, but we know snow potentials there with cold air filling in. It's happening near Zion. A lot going on in the weather world. Let's go ahead and take a look. I have to show you this live view of Cedar City. That squall came through and it meant business, but the snow continues. We actually have watched this car plowing the runway at the Cedar City Airport. It continues to come down with temperatures in the 20s. We've got that winter weather advisory in effect for central and southern Utah. Winter storm warning in pink for the southeastern side of the state. They're going to pick up the most snow from this. It really means business. Now, when it comes down to it, we have a lot going on with the snow. It is complicating travel. The UDOT map showing southwestern Utah as the toughest spot with road snow, which is not a surprise, but road slush in other portions of the state, including on I-15 with those pockets of snow showers. The next layer of the storm, are you ready for it? It's the wind. It means business. We've got wind advisory that, that were posted new this afternoon. I'm going to break them down, what to expect, but here's a little tip. You want to secure loose objects now, even along the Wasatch Front. I'll explain why in my full forecast. Glenn, Emily, over to you. All right, thank you for the heads up, Alana. Well, new developments out of Twila County. We are getting a look at rescuers searching for and eventually recovering the body of a 14-year-old boy. Now, we now know the name Jaden Davis was who drowned in Settlement Canyon Reservoir last night. Police say Davis and two other teenagers were out on the ice around 7 p.m. when he and an 18-year-old fell through the ice. The 18-year-old boy was able to get out, but Davis remained trapped. Today, Jaden's granddad spoke about what this loss means to their family but he said he wanted to focus on the rescue efforts. We were made as comfortable as we could possibly be under the circumstance. And uh, I, I can't thank them enough for their diligence and, and the amazing job they did to bring our Jaden back to us. Police say after a long and difficult search, rescuers found Jaden's body just after midnight. Tooele High School canceled their boys basketball game against Payson High School tonight while the players grieve. Payson basketball and cheer made the three and a half hour trek to Tooele and back home to drop off this banner offering condolences. In Salt Lake County, a change of position from the Salt Lake County Sheriff and CEO of Unified Police Department. Rosie Rivera says she will not oppose a substitute of House Bill 374. That bill would dissolve Unified Police Department in 2025. Opposed to the original bill prohibiting a county sheriff or sheriff's deputies from working for another law enforcement agency. Rivera says the substitute buys the department some time. If we were to kill the bill, um, the sponsor has said he will continue to bring it back. This problem will never go away. Rivera says she believes the UPD is one of the best in the state and even the country, but that she sees no other way forward than stepping back and letting this bill unfold in front of lawmakers. The bill now goes in front of a House committee tomorrow morning. And on Utah's Capitol Hill, a joint resolution now in effect changes the injunction process for judges. House Joint Resolution 2 passing a final vote in the House. The resolution makes it harder for judges to issue a preliminary injunction. They can only do so if there is substantial evidence those suing will win their case. A change to the resolution narrowed the scope of the bans already in place that can be reconsidered. 
that was a request by the bar to make a minor change. So we made that change and now the bar and I are hunky-dory. According to Planned Parenthood, the substituted resolution can still turn over the ban holding off Utah's abortion law. Planned Parenthood claims that this was the sponsor that what the sponsor was angling for. They released a statement saying in part, quote, it should be alarming to everyone that legislators are willing to weaken the democratic structures of the state to change court orders that they disagree with, end quote. The Weber School District taking action at Roy High School after an investigation. It found allegations of students chanting racial slurs at a Hunter High School student during a basketball game were true. ABC 4's Northern Utah correspondent Kate Garner reporting in Roy, talking to advocates for racial equality about these findings. Kate? The school district looked into those allegations and found that there were some serious issues that needed to be addressed. Now, the Ogden NAACP tells me that they are glad that the school district took this seriously and that they are trying to make changes. Wherever we are, whoever we are, we need to remember that we're in this together and that we need to put in the work to understand what it is to be kind and inclusive. Angel Castillo with Ogden NAACP says the organization recognizes Weber School District's work to protect all students. The NAACP is proud of the work that the school districts are doing and they're trying. According to the school district, students made derogatory comments and barked at an opposing player during a basketball game against Hunter High. An official statement reads, as a school we recognize and acknowledge our behavior has been harmful to others. Roy High will not tolerate this type of behavior. We sincerely apologize to Hunter High and any other communities that have been impacted by these actions. The NAACP says children will do and say things they shouldn't. And our young people deserve an opportunity to be educated and understand why we all need to be inclusive and be in this together in education. Sanctions are in place at the school to prevent this from happening again. The district reminds all that attending games is a privilege, and those who harass others at games may lose that privilege long term. Community members are using social media to voice their opinions on this. One says, I just hope the same people freaking out over this never play online multiplayer. Another writes, they should be punished individually. Where's the accountability here? And one posts, finding out the local high school is actively engaging in hate speech targeting minorities is definitely alarming, illegal, and worthy of the Weber County School District's attention. One parent said they were at the most recent game and said that the school is taking this seriously and that there are extra administrators around the student section making sure that nothing gets out of hand. Reporting from Roy Cade Garner, ABC4 News. All right, we thank you, Cade. Well, according to Salt Lake City Police, an estimated 100,000 people will be making their way to Salt Lake this weekend for the NBA All-Star Game. So with an increase of people and traffic, city leaders have plans in place to ensure a safe and fun experience for locals and visitors. ABC 4's Annika Johns hearing from the mayor and Salt Lake City's police chief today. She joins us now live. And Annika, it's going to be really important, this focus on safety this weekend. Yeah, that's right. It will be Glenn. And like you said, there were there's an estimated 100,000 people who will be making their way to the capital city. And in order to accommodate this and make sure everyone stays safe, Salt Lake PD will be closing off certain roads surrounding Vivint Arena. Now, during their uh, Meeting this morning, Salt Lake PD announced that 300 West on the east side of the arena and 100 South will be closed 24 seven during the events. Other roads near the arena like South Temple and West Temple will have one lane closure and both 400 and 200 West will be closed starting February 16th, beginning at 2 p.m. The topic of mass shootings did come up during the conference and missed the shootings at Michigan State University Monday night, but Chief Brown stated that they do not have a plan. They do have pl a plan for such an incident just in case. We're prepared for that. Um, we've taken those precautions. We have, you know, a plan in place. But there's no better partner in any type of situation, and especially a mass shooting, than our community. If somebody sees something, let us know. Big or small, we want to know. Like Chief Brown said, Salt Lake PD is relying heavily on the community this weekend, and they want to remind everybody that if you see something unusual to report it, Police will also be hosting a town hall meeting this Thursday to discuss the road closures for anybody who lives in the area. We're going to keep covering the All-Star Weekend as it starts and continues this week. We'll have live coverage here at Vivid Arena on Thursday and Friday morning and to let you know about all the excitement, so stay tuned. Reporting live from Salt Lake City, Annika Johns, ABC4 News.
All right, thank you, Annika. Well, love is in the air as Utahns celebrate Valentine's Day. Yeah, with February 14th landing on Tuesday, some flower shops have been filling orders since the weekend. The Petal Coop in Salt Lake City says it's a holiday that takes them months to prepare for. And they try to add a personal touch to each flower arrangement or bouquet, saying they understand their flowers serve as a symbol of love. That's really important to us is to kind of have that person feel the love when they're receiving their flowers. For those last minute shoppers, they have an option called late bloomers. Americans are expected to spend more than two billion on flowers this Valentine's Day. Woo, all right. Still so at inflation, has Utah firefighters feeling the pinch? See how Unified Fire Authority is making their dollars stretch in tonight's Behind the Badge.